are watching Gears. Hey, welcome to Gears and our continuation of the Street Sweeper project. Now, this is a car that we're building to be a sneaky street machine that's going to look one way on the outside and perform completely different on the inside, giving us the potential to surprise a lot of cars out on the street. Now, as you can see, we started with a 73 Plymouth Satellite that not only looks like a grandma's car, but it was actually owned by a 90-year-old grandmother. So the first thing we did was drop out the original engine and front suspension. And in its place, we bolted up a Magnum Force Transformer front suspension to make room for the massive Ray Barton Hemi that we're going to shoehorn into this engine compartment. So today, we're going to lay out the rest of the drivetrain and deal with what goes in front and behind that engine. OK, up here in front, we have got to come up with some way to cool that big old engine. And this stock radiator isn't going to get it, because first of all, it's tiny. Look at this. Second of all, you can see where it's got some leaks that would have to be fixed. And third of all, it's all clogged up with what looks like cat hair. So we're just going to chuck that. And in its place, we're going to put this Griffin Direct Fit Radiator. Now, they call it Direct Fit because these are built to fit right in the exact place of that stock radiator, even look like it. But there's a big difference. Check out how much thicker this radiator is. It's got all aluminum construction. And as you can see, all the inlets and outlets are exactly where they're supposed to be. Then, of course, it's got dual electric fans and an aluminum shroud already installed. You have the overflow tank, the electrical for the fans, which makes this basically a bolted in and go deal. Now, the best part about a Griffin radiator, though, is that they will build them for your drivetrain. So this radiator will cool that engine on a hot summer day, idling in traffic with the air conditioning on. Accessories can be another issue when you're doing an engine swap. And on a project like this, where the junkyard's not really a choice, you got a couple of options. If you're using traditional style motor mounts, March Performance has this really cool system called the Revolver. It uses a main mounting plate that then mounts the air conditioning compressor, the alternator, and the power steering pump all tight to the engine. And then a series of pulleys makes it possible to run it all with a single serpentine belt. This is a super slick system. However, if you're going to be using a motor plate like this, Magnum Force has got an accessory system that allows you to mount all of your accessories right to the motor plate. This is a super clean, super cool look. And it runs the accessories with two belts. Now, if you just got to have that one belt revolver look, you can combine the two systems, provided you've got at least eight inches between the front of the block and your electric fans, and you get the extra spacers from Magnum Force. OK, that takes care of the front of the engine. Now, obviously, we need a transmission back here. So we made a call to ATI Performance Products because they build some of the toughest transmissions on the planet. Now, they specialize in racing and street transmissions. So we had them put together a bulletproof 727 torque flight that's going to handle all the mayhem that that thing will kick out on the strip, but it'll also run down the street well. And that's because ATI builds their transmissions to match your engine, your car, your gear ratio, and how you're going to drive it, which means they also pick the right torque converter, flex plate, and all the hardware to put this thing in and go. Now, I know some of you guys are going, you know, those are tough, but that's only three gears, man. <laughs> well, I've got a solution for that. Come on. This is the legendary Gear Vendors Overdrive Unit. Now, what this little guy does is allow you to split the gears in your transmission so a three-speed becomes a six-speed. And it gives you a lot more options when it comes to performance and fuel economy. Now, the way this works is pretty simple. You got this adapter that bolts on right in place of this stock tail housing, even utilizes the stock transmission mount, so there's no fabrication involved here. Then the overdrive unit just bolts to that. Now, to operate this thing, all you do is push a button on your gear shift knob. Now, if you don't want to be pushing the button all the time, Gear Vendors also has this digi drive system that'll do it for you. 
But trust me, it's a lot of fun to push the button. The Gear Vendors Overdrive is one of the best upgrades that you can do to an automatic transmission. And they'll handle a thousand horsepower, so you're not going to tear one up. All right, that takes care of the front of the engine, the rear of the engine. What about the sides, as in the headers? Well, we got a set of headers here from TTI, and they're designed to not only fit the Hemi, but also around the Magnum Force front suspension. As you can see, they've got big, thick flanges, so they're not going to warp on us. They've got a high temperature coating, so they're not going to turn ugly on us. The only thing we have to do now is just test fit them to the engine. And that's why we're laying out all these parts, because when you change this many things, you have got to make sure that stuff is fitting before you stuff it in the engine compartment. Because once you get it in there, that's a really bad time to find out something's not fitting right. A successful automotive project takes planning and organization. But instead of using an old tablet or notebook, there's the Gears Project Planning Book. This unique workbook was designed to help you lay out a project, the parts, the tools, and the cost, so you can stay on track. It even has places to attach photos and document your progress to keep you motivated. And if you ever decide to sell the vehicle, it serves as a complete history of what's been done. If you're in the middle of an automotive project or thinking of starting one, the Gears Project Planning Book is the best way to lay it out and make it happen. Hey, welcome back to Gears, where we're showing that it's possible to take an old discarded grandma's car and turn it into a state-of-the-art street machine by choosing the right parts from the aftermarket. Because if you don't have to hand fabricate a bunch of stuff or replace a bunch of rusty panels, you can build a car like this a lot quicker and a lot cheaper than say if you started with a more desirable body style that was in rougher shape like this. This is a 71 Roadrunner that has a ton of rust, a ragged interior, and a worn out engine. But even though everything needs to be replaced, the owner spent almost $4,000 for this car than we spent on our satellite. Now, so far, we've laid out the engine, the drivetrain, the cooling system, the front suspension. Now we're going to move on to the front brakes. All right. Since we have a state of the art suspension under this thing now, and we're putting in a heck of a drivetrain, we got to have some good brakes. So we made a call to Willwood and picked up one of their disc brake setups for the Magna Force suspension. Now, the first thing that catches your eye here are these huge 13 inch rotors and these aluminum hubs to hold them. But the real star of this system are these six piston calipers that are going to give us tremendous clamping force, which is important because that is a heavy car. Now, I know compared to what came in this thing stock, that looks pretty exotic, but you're going to be surprised how easy that goes in. The new hub goes on first, followed by the caliper bracket, then the rotor, and finally the caliper. And there you go, big brakes ready to rock and roll. Okay, the next question is, what kind of wheels and tires are we gonna use on this car? Because obviously we want something classic looking, but not too flashy, and something a little different than your typical five spoke. So the answer came from Team 3 wheels in what they call an LT wheel. Check this out. This looks just like the old Trans Am racer wheel from the 70s. You got the cast center, which gives it a performance look, a polished rim that gives it just enough flash, and that cool center knockoff, which just tops it all off. Now, the size we're using on the front, 17 by 8. The size on the rear, 17 by 11. Yeah. Now, obviously, we need some high-performance tires. So we went to Mickey Thompson and got a set of these street comps because these are just a great all-round high-performance tire for the street. But when you really start pushing them on a road course, they really come alive. Now, the size we're using on the front, 245, 45, 17. And then on the rear, we're using this huge 315, 3517. That's going to put some rubber under that car. Now, since that is a sleeper car, we also got another set of rear tires. Check this out. This is for when we're feeling mischievous. This is the Mickey Thompson ET Street. And this is basically a street legal drag slick. Look at that, how soft that is. These things will shock somebody at a stoplight or they'll allow you to run your best times on a drag strip. So, 
No matter how you're feeling, you got a tire here. Now that is a really cool looking wheel. Now one last thing you need to consider before you start stuffing an engine in the engine compartment is what are you gonna do about your electronics? Because we're gonna be using this MSD ignition box and this blaster coil. And even if you don't mount them now, you at least need to be planning where you're gonna mount them so you don't have to deal with it later once all your room is gone. Now obviously a lot of this old electronics is gonna go away, so we're gonna have some room on the firewall. We're gonna have some room down here where the old battery used to go because we're gonna mount the battery in the trunk. And then we got a pocket down there on the other side too. So we got some options here. Fortunately, these old B bodies have a lot of room under the hood. Now, quick tip. Brought to you by E3 Spark Plugs. Born to burn. Most people know that making a cardboard template and using it as a pattern can save a ton of time and material when you're working with flat metal. The problem is, when you're working with tubing, it's a little hard to make a cardboard template to work with this. So the way most people approach tubing is they try to measure everything out perfectly, which is very time consuming and tedious, or they end up just trimming the ends of the tube down till they finally get it to fit, which is also very time consuming and tedious. There's a better way to do it. All you have to do is go to your hardware store and pick up some round stock and then bend it so it matches the shape of the piece that you're trying to fit. Then, using this as your template, you trim this down until it fits perfectly. Then you put it back on your good piece, trim both ends, and you have a perfectly fitting piece the first time. Best part is, you can take this, straighten it out, and reuse it on another project. If you'd like to learn more tips to make your life easier in the shop, check out the tips page on the website. When Stacy David makes house calls in the big Gears Nation truck, it makes for some pretty special moments. But if they can't come to your garage, the next best thing to do is check out the stuff they have online to help you out. Things like DVDs, wiring and build books, apparel and fender covers are just some of the things you'll find to help you with your project or make a great gift for that certain car nut in your life. If you're ready to get out there, build something, and then go smoke the tires on it, StacyDavid.com can help you do that. In the world of the automobile, we are always striving to make them better in some way, whether it's power or mileage or looks or handling or whatever. Matter of fact, that's the whole point of the aftermarket, making things better. But bringing a better product to market requires research and development and testing. And testing an automotive product can be a heck of a lot of fun. So when we found out that E3 was testing a new spark plug for top fuel drag racing engines, well, we had to check it out, for scientific purposes, of course. Our journey took us to Thunder Valley Drag Strip in Bristol, Tennessee, where we hooked up with spark plug expert Don Ward to get the concept behind the new plug. E3 already had technology that, that uh, a, a ground wire that makes more power and burns more fuel. So what we did was we took that side wire and put it on a top fuel plug. It was also important that this be a real E3 plug, not some special racing plug with an E3 logo on it. Because the unique cage design that works so well on street cars also seemed to be the perfect fit for a high horsepower racing application. And the only way to find out is to test it hard. Of course, a top fuel engine is unlike anything on the planet. With over 10,000 horsepower, these things will destroy virtually any component on them. That's why they're literally torn down and rebuilt after each run. You know, that's our kind of our mission is just to run better, run quicker, faster. A top fuel engine makes 10,000 horsepower. Uh, they have 30,000 pounds of cylinder pressure. The cylinder temperature is 3,000 degrees, and they run a quarter mile 
in uh, less than four seconds, and they used 12 gallons of fuel. Now, there are several teams running E3 racing plugs. One is Morgan Lucas in Top Fuel, and the other is Jim Dunn in Funny Car. And both teams have been surprised with the performance of the new plug. We have three cars running them right now uh, because we're still in the experimental stage. Two of the cars have run their best times ever. In the highly competitive world of drag racing, nothing is left to chance. So each plug is changed and checked and documented after each run. With this kind of testing, it's easy to see what's working and what's not. Now, just in case you think that these guys aren't really running E3 plugs, take a look at this. These are plugs that they have destroyed through runs. And by doing so, they're able to make a better plug. That's amazing. <laughs> well, you never make them better unless you break them to start with. So when we get a broken spark plug, we go back and look at it, and we re-engineer it to try to make it better. And through this literal trial by fire, E3 has been able to develop a plug that could not only survive, but actually began to make a difference in these high horsepower engines. Let me tell you the story about the first time you put E3s in. I've been around the sport for a long time, and Jim Dunn gets these plugs out. I go, how many are you putting in? Two, like in one cylinder? He goes, no, I'm putting them all in. I'm like, you're crazy. They were in very good. Yeah, we put them in last week, first run, and I said, well, I'll, not, I'll make it safe and everything. We went out there and made a run. Not only was it a great run, it was our best run of the year so far, a 407 at 311 miles an hour. Now, I know it's really cool to see those cars ripping down the track at over 300 miles an hour, but there is another benefit to racing. All that technology, all that development that goes into building racing parts, that eventually makes it into the parts that you can buy for your car or truck. That's always been the best way to take a good product and make it better. Now, obviously, you're probably not going to need a parachute to slow down your car when you're dropping the kids off at school, but it's nice to know that some of that racing DNA is available for you to put in your engine. If E3 can make a top fuel spark plug that will last four seconds in a top fuel car, that plug would run 100,000 miles in a street car easily. The cylinder pressure that these cars make to be able to withstand that and live and still, you know, burn the fuel and not fail, still survive in one of these, you know, that's it's probably about the ultimate test. If you've got a cool project and would like to show millions of other gearheads what you're working on, you need to join Gears Nation. This is a free, interactive online community of auto enthusiasts that will allow you to learn from, share with, and encourage others, and at the same time, show off your project. There are also premium memberships available for access to special merchandise and the entire Gears catalog. If you're into mechanical things, you're welcome on Gears Nation. And who knows, you might even see your project on TV. And now, Parts Bin, brought to you by Hearthrob Exhaust, where technology and craftsmanship come together. You know, there's no doubt that stuffing a modern drivetrain into a classic muscle car is hot right now. But almost as popular is stuffing one into a classic truck or a wagon or a Suburban. Because generally these are cheaper to get into than a car. They're really cool and they're a heck of a lot of fun. Are you kidding? Look at this. And nobody understands that more than American Powertrain. So they've come out with a kit that will allow you to put a six or five speed transmission into your classic truck. Take a look. This is the kit for the 67 through 72 Chevy pickup and it starts with either a Magnum six speed or the TK05 speed depending on your budget. And then it also includes this big wide aluminum cross member to reach out and connect to those frame rails. You got the speedometer hookups, the electrical hookups, all the nuts and bolts, so you don't have to run back and forth to the auto parts store or the junkyard to find all that little stuff. It even comes with the drive shaft, so you're good to go on that. Now, of course, if you need a bell housing, clutch, pressure plate, flywheel, American Powertrain has all that, and they can set it up to work with this kit and your project. So, if you've got a classic pickup, Ford, Chevy, Dodge, and you really want to make it run, American Powertrain has got the transmission part handled. 
You know, most people realize that any engine will benefit from getting more air in and out of it, especially a diesel. And that's why Air Raid came out with this cold air intake system for you Ford guys that are running the big Super Duty trucks with the 6.7 liter diesel engine. Now check this out. It comes with a one piece air box to keep the dust and the hot air out. Then you've got this modular intake tube to blow that cold air into the engine. And of course they've got a huge version of their washable, reusable filter that they're so famous for. The best part is, when they put this on a truck and put it on the dyno, they picked up 11 horsepower and 73 foot-pounds. Yeah, not bad for something that goes on in just a few minutes with simple hand tools. If you're running a diesel in your Ford and you want to unleash that thing, one of the simplest, cheapest ways to do that is with an Air Raid cold air intake system. What are you working on? Brought to you by Woodward Fabrication, selling quality metalworking equipment since 1966. Today's What Are You Working On comes from Sean Flynn from Rapid City, South Dakota. And Sean is a single parent raising a nine-year-old son. So you wouldn't think he'd have any time for a project, right? Well, Sean knows how important it is to teach his son the ways of the automobile. So he picked himself up a 67 Dodge Dart and it started out with just a slant six automatic, similar to our old satellite here. But as you can see, it was about ready for the crusher when he got it. So he completely restored the old rusty body and installed mini tubs in the rear. He converted the car to fit a big block engine and an automatic. And he redid the front and rear suspension to handle the big block power. And he even hand built a custom exhaust system to fit the car. Now Sean figures he's put over a thousand hours into this project over the last four years and he's had his son right there helping him the whole time. Which prompted this statement from his son. Dad, you're really good with cars. You're like one of the guys on TV. <laughs> well Sean, now you are one of the guys on TV. And to recognize such a cool project, we hooked up with our buddies at Woodward Fab and we're going to give you a bench vice because every shop needs at least a couple of vices. Also, we're going to give you a year subscription to Hot Rod Magazine so you can get some more ideas for that project. And we're going to give you one of our electrical wiring books to help you lay out the wiring for that car. Now, for the rest of you guys, if you want to get in on this, you want your project featured on the show, you got to go to stacydavid.com and submit it to Gears Nation. We pull all of our What Are You Working Ons and all of the On The Road segments right up at Gears Nation. Also, don't forget to check us out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all that junk, because we've got all kinds of stuff going on behind the scenes that you just won't see on the show. All right, I got to get back to work, and I know you got something to do. So get out there and work on something. We'll see you next time. <laughs>